Educate. Empower. Enable. Impact. Thank you for tuning in to That Will Never Work podcast, where we share inspiring information and personal experiences related to business and the entrepreneurial journey from those who are leaders in their respective field. Now, here's your host, author and business coach, Maurice. I thank you very much for tuning in today. I have Mr. Productivity himself today, and hopefully we will be able to Work out some kinks for you, you know, uh, <laughs> today. You know, as a productivity coach, uh, he's based in Houston. He is the host of Mr. Productivity Podcast, and he has been dedicated to guiding executives to master the art of productivity. Maybe those of us that may not be uh, executives, we'll figure out something for you too. But <laughs> <laughs> but with a rich experience of over 1,200 podcast episodes which is a lot when i heard that i was a little intimidated but we're we're that's the goal we're gonna we're gonna get there and his goal is to empower individuals to overcome distractions prioritize tasks effectively and achieve daily clarity drawing from his passion for running and continuous learning he offers strategies to enhance productivity providing listeners like yourself with practical insights to um, transform your professional and personal lives. I introduce all of you today to Mark. Mark, thank you very much for coming on today. Maurice, you the man. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, you know, Mr. Productivity, how can we uh, avoid, not, and we can't really say avoid, right, but how do we get around distractions and, and use it to maybe our advantage, if you will. People aren't distracted in this day and age, are they? I mean, what are you talking about? There's nobody who suffered. Listen, I missed your productivity, mm -hmm. and I am distracted. We are all distracted. The number one distraction is the thing that is now permanently attached to our hands, 24-7, 365. Yes. That would be our phones. Mm -hmm. We've got to know what's going on TikTok and mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook and X and Threads and YouTube and Snapchat. Did I miss anyone? <laughs> we constantly are being distracted. And mm -hmm. I tell people, this is my biggest piece of advice. You have to be the human being. Mm -hmm. You need to control your tech instead of your tech mm -hmm. controlling you. Now, I see a lot of posts on social media and people say, oh, you shouldn't have your phone charging next to your bed when you're sleeping. I do because my phone doesn't control me. I'm not mm -hmm. better than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have just developed this muscle to say I am the human being mm -hmm. and I'm in control. If you think your technology is really in control of you, turn it off and let me know how it impacts you because <laughs> you have got to make the decisions. I am not going to be distracted. Right. As Maurice said, you are not going to eliminate all distractions. You're a human being living with other human beings mm -hmm. and lots of distractions. But you need to make a conscious choice that I am going to do whatever I can to reduce those distractions. And I would recommend people start with their notifications. I teach mm -hmm. my clients something called a notification cleanse. All that means mm. is you go through every app and you look at all the notifications you have for those apps mm -hmm. and you go, do I really need this notification on? Is it distracting me mm. or is it serving me? And if it's distracting you, turn it off. Now, some people are going to go, wait a minute, what if I don't get that important Facebook message <laughs> or that important right. you know, TikTok message? When you open the app, mm -hmm. they're all going to be there. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to do a notification cleanse and then put on your reminders, maybe the first Saturday of every month, mm -hmm. go through for any of those that slip through the cracks. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> most definitely. So, so because of, you know, you're, you're talking to executives and as you stated, you, you stated something that was very important. Sometimes we feel as though these notifications are most important to our daily lives that in order for us to meet our quotas or whatever it might be, you know, so so how do we not allow, because you stated how not to allow it to control us, but if we feel as though our nine to five or our 
company is controlling us in that space. How do we control that? Um, because we have numbers, we have money goals, we might have client goals. So what you know? How do we ease off of that, if you will? When I talked about the notification clans, what I encourage people to do is like, for example, let me give you a real life example. So on my notifications, I have my credit card app and uh, notifications go through. Mm. So I don't make sure Mo Maurice is not charging, you know, my card someplace. Mm -hmm. uh, we wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> but I also have the weather apps, my calendar, my to-do list. I don't mm. have, I don't have news apps on my phone. I don't think, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that as you're going through your day, whether you're an executive or you're a stay at home mom or mm -hmm. you're a solopreneur, doesn't matter. You want to be able to have your tool, your devices, your technology serve you. Mm -hmm. So if you have a call with a client coming up, you're going to want to know, Hey, yeah, I got a call with a client coming up. Mm -hmm. And so for those calls, like for this call I had with you, I don't have it the notification just when it starts. Mm -hmm. I have it like one minute before, cause that's when my fanny should be in the chair <laughs> and also right. 19 minutes ahead. Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. 19 minutes? People ask me all the time. So I'll answer that question before they ask it. Because if you have a notification, that's an even number, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, you may have something else that goes off at the same time. So I encourage mm -hmm. people to come up with odd numbers for mm -hmm. notifications, not for everything, but for those things you really need to be on time for, mm -hmm. you're going to want it to go off. Like in my case, 19 minutes ahead before I had this call with Maurice, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, that's right. Got to get my computer set up, my microphone set up, make sure I gone to the restroom. I got my water. I'm all set to go. So I think if you look at notifications that way, mm -hmm. then your device is going to be a tool in the productivity toolbox. It's going to help you. Mm -hmm. But if you have too many on and your phone's constantly going ding, ding, mm -hmm. ding, ding, mm -hmm. now it's, is it serving me or is it distracting me? Do I need to know that notification? I'm about ready to go into a meeting. I'm about ready to go work on my book or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it's being distracting. So I think we need to start at notifications. I don't think the answer is to turn them all off. Mm -hmm when I hear people say, I always have my phone on do not disturb. I don't want to be disturbed at all. And my first thought Maurice is what if one of your loved ones dies right. during the night or mm -hmm. during the day mm -hmm. and you have your phone on do not disturb. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you feel if you found out your father passed away 13 right. hours after the fact? So I don't think you should have your phone do not disturb all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, Full disclosure, as I'm doing this interview <laughs> with you, my phone is on Do Not Disturb because right. this is the single most important thing. Right. But if the house catches on fire, my wife comes in the back door there, well, this interview is going to end really quickly. <laughs> yes, so yes, there yes, are yes, some yes. exceptions, but I think people need to figure out what works for them. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think there's a, a rule that everyone mm -hmm. needs to go by. You need to look at your situation and find out, okay, I can do this. I can't do that. Right. So... <clears throat> When we, as uh, entrepreneurs, we're, we're kind of governed by social media, right? And we're constantly on there because we're caught, you know, we're, we're consumed with likes, we're consumed with shares, things like that, which also can be a distraction. So how would you encourage one to even smooth that out? <laughs> well, if you're a solopreneur, entrepreneur, an executive of a small, medium-sized business, you need to look at social media as something you use instead mm -hmm. of it using you. So mm -hmm. I don't spend time endlessly and, quite frankly, mindlessly scrolling on TikTok. If you do, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying <laughs> if you want to build your business and your brand and your awareness, you need to do two things on social media. Post content that helps people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. engage in the comments with value added comments. Again, you're adding value. So people go, huh, this Maurice guy adds a lot of value. Oh, they go to his profile. Wow, mm -hmm. he's got a lot of great content. Maybe at that point, because you've proven yourself, mm -hmm. they go to your website mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they join your email newsletter or they subscribe to your podcast. Mm -hmm. But you, it's all about value. There's a lot of stuff on social media 
which is designed to give you a dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. So you keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And of course, the algorithms on these social media platforms have gotten really good. So if you like (laughs) cute baby videos, they're going to show it to you over and over again. And you tell yourself, just one more, just one more, just one more, just one more. And all of a sudden, four hours has passed. You're like, Mm. what just happened? (laughs) Well, because you got lost. That's what they want you to do. They Mm. don't want you to leave the platform ever. Mm -hmm. So you have got to say, hmm, Mr. Productivity said something. What was that? Oh, yeah. Use social media instead of being used by social media. So when you're being used by social media, you can also feel overwhelmed, right? Oh, yeah. You know, and so um, some of the things that you do talk about about this work-life balance and, you know, being product, you know, uh, being very productive. But how, how would you talk about beyond – overcoming distractions and smoothing them out, how would you uh, um, advise someone to deal with being feeling that feeling of being overwhelmed with all that also? Look, we all have the same 24 hours to spend in a day. I don't care if you're single, if you are empty nesters like my wife and I are, or if you have a whole <laughs> brood of kids at home, you have the same 24 hours. If mm-hmm. your name is Elon Musk, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos, 24 hours. It doesn't matter. So you need to go, okay, I don't want to become overwhelmed. So how can I structure my day today Mm -hmm. where I minimize the overwhelm? Maybe you get up earlier before everyone in your household's awake, or maybe you do it after everyone's gone to bed. Mm -hmm. So you need to look at your situation, figure out where you're getting overwhelmed, and then determine what would be a good solution for this overwhelm. And a lot of people, they do what I call pushing a rope. Mm. What I mean by that, instead of stepping back Mm -hmm. and saying, hmm, how could I take care of this overwhelm? And if you have no answers, there's a website called (laughs) google.com, G-O-O-G-L-E.com, and you can type out your answer. You don't have Mm. to say overwhelm. You say how do I deal with the overwhelm of fill in the blank? And you'd mm-hmm. be surprised. You'll probably get like 30 million hits and mm-hmm. you're like, Oh, I never thought about that. So we don't have to come up with the solutions ourselves. Mm-hmm. We can go to other people who have struggled with the same thing. I promise you, no matter what you're struggling with mm-hmm. in terms of overwhelm, you're not the only person in the world that has suffered from that. So mm-hmm. go out to the internet, find out, what possible solutions are. Do not ignore the problem. Mm -hmm. Do not say, well, I just got to live with it. No, figure out a way to solve the problem. Now I'm not saying the solution is going to be easy. It may (laughs) require some sacrifice, but don't just live with it. Mm -hmm. If it really bothers you like a little pebble in your shoe, figure out a way on how maybe you can't eliminate it, but maybe you can reduce it. So what inspired you to become the solution to people that are dealing with these spaces of being distracted or are feeling overwhelmed? It all started when I got fired. So back in mm. July of 2005, I was fired from my job. And it was more of a, a curse back then, but now I understand it was a blessing. Mm. It was Mama Bird kicking me out of the nest. Time mm-hmm. for me to fly. Mm-hmm. And so I tried to start a couple endeavors that didn't succeed. But one thing that did click was teaching other people. I love teaching people, which is ironic because in high school and college, (laughs) I didn't like to give a book report in front of an empty room, including my teacher. And one day I was on a a call with my first coach and I was kind of uncharacteristically blue. So normally I identify as Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Mm. That was like Eeyore. And my coach said, (laughs) what's going on? you're not your usual self. I'm Mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to teach and I want to coach and I don't know what I should teach people. He goes, well, why don't you teach them how to be more productive? And when he said that, I'm like, Hmm. Whoa, why would you say that? (laughs) I mean, what, where did that come from? And he said, I I've coached a lot of people in my career Mm -hmm. and you Mm -hmm. are one of the most naturally gifted, productive people. And you should share that gift with the world. And when he said that, I'm like, what? Because, you know, mm. you can't always see the forest for the trees. Right. You can't always right. see your gifts. Someone else has to point them out to you. Mm. So when they told me this, I was like, whoa, 
And obviously I listened to their advice because now I have Mr. Productivity trademark, <laughs> have the Mr. Productivity podcast, as you mentioned, and it took someone else seeing that in me. Mm -hmm. And the, the question people ask me was, how did you become productive? Mm -hmm. And I have to give credit to my late parents. I'm an orphan, but my late mm -hmm. parents raised me in a very structured household. Okay. Chores had to be done. Homework had to be done, mm -hmm. certain bedtime. So I have to give credit to my parents. I didn't know I was going to be Mr. Productivity when I was 12, <laughs> right. but here I am. <laughs> so so what encouraged you and inspired you to even start the podcast and reach over 1,200 episodes? Because that's very productive. So what, <laughs> what encouraged you to get to that point? <laughs> All credit goes to Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you're an mm. entrepreneur, you know who Gary V is. So mm. in the spring of 2017, I happen to catch one of Gary's shorts, and he says the future is voice and audio, and everyone needs to have a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, can I create a podcast? <laughs> I mean, I listen to podcasts, but could I create a podcast? Mm -hmm. I went to that website, google.com, and typed mm -hmm. in those fateful words, how do I start a podcast? And on July 7th, 2017, I launched the it was formerly known as the Mark Stuchowski podcast for okay. obvious reasons, I think, to your audience. Right, right, I right, changed right, it right. to the Mr. Productivity <laughs> podcast, and I remember the first episode I had was I had 25 downloads, mm -hmm. which blew my mind because I knew I downloaded it, my wife downloaded it. I'm like, who are these other 23 people? Now I get more, way more downloads than that, but mm -hmm. I'm just amazed that you and I right now, someone is listening to our conversation mm -hmm. in their ears, mm -hmm. and I just love the platform of podcasting so much so for myself you know we spoke about it in the green room where i'm i'm teetering at 300 right and yep. some people don't and we know that we and we understand as podcasters that mo a lot of people don't even get to 50 because they fizzle out or whatever mm -hmm. the situation their their circumstances might be how were you able to get over that mark or that hump and and keep it going because a lot of us because we 25 sounds like a lot for some people, right? You know, mm -hmm. but and, and they're not encouraged enough to, hey, you know what, I need to keep it going. I need to keep it going. I need to keep it going. So what encouraged you to stay the, the path? Well, first of all, I love the platform because social media, that's not our playpen. That's rented land. We've mm -hmm. all heard that. Mm -hmm. The podcast is mine. So every podcast episode I do, it's on my Google Drive. It's mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Second thing is, I'm a big fan of streaks. So I use an app called Streaks, and okay. I like tracking things. And once you get to a certain number on any task you're doing or any habit you're doing, and it varies by the individual and what the habit is, you're not going to want to quit. So I've run mm. over 2,300 days in a row. You think nice. I'm going to take a day off? No. Right. right. I've released over 1,260 episodes. You think I'm going to stop the episode and start another podcast? No. I love the platform. Mm -hmm. I love getting feedback from my listeners. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that people go, I heard this on your podcast, or I heard you on Maurice's show. Mm -hmm. I just love the platform. But I, as we were talking in the green room, I tell people, do not do it for the money. You are mm -hmm. probably not going to get a $100 million Spotify contract <laughs> right. like Joe right. Rogan. Don't do it for the money. Don't do mm -hmm. it for the ads. Do it because you really want to to serve people. And that, Maurice, is why I do the podcast. I genuinely want to help people mm -hmm. not be overwhelmed and get more things done. So as a podcaster, your background, you was in radio, correct? I was. <laughs> I you know, was. You know, and so and, and I'm, I'm making that statement because sometimes we go into a field or a space where we're competing with someone that might have already had that experience, so what would you suggest to someone to say, hey, you know what, you're not necessarily competing to that, you know, with that individual or whatever, you know, keep that love, whatever else. So how would you encourage someone to stay in that space and, and keep that part moving? Well, they have to wake up every morning like I do, like I was a little boy Christmas morning to find out what Santa Claus brought me. Mm -hmm. You have to have that love for whatever you're doing in life. If you go, oh, you got to record another podcast or, mm -hmm. oh, I got to record another YouTube video or, oh, I got to write in my book. <laughs> it's not going to work. You have got to look forward to it. So mm -hmm. one of the things that people have been saying to me, Mark, you got to write a book. Feeling it. So why would I 
force myself mm-hmm. to sit behind a computer and go, oh, what am I going to write about today? Right, when right. it doesn't spark joy for me. So no matter what your listeners are dealing with, mm-hmm. if it's a drudge, maybe you don't quit, but maybe you take time off. Mm-hmm. But if it sparks mm-hmm. joy, you're going to want to do it. I love doing my podcast. I love guesting on other people's show. But I think if people try to do things that spark joy, mm-hmm. you're going to have a lot less procrastination, mm-hmm. a lot less overwhelm because you're doing it because you want to do it. I don't do my podcast because I have to. I do the podcast because I want to, and it brings me joy, like being on your show. I appreciate that, Mark. I appreciate that a lot. Um, you know, but I think sometimes when we look at the the landscape, because, you know, I'm a solopreneur, I'm only, you know, I'm doing this myself, and like you said, it's a, it's a labor of love, if you will, right? But you start mm-hmm. looking at those individuals who have big companies supporting them. You know, as I stated earlier about your radio background, it might be easier for you to hop on the microphone. Whereas for mm-hmm. myself, I'm I don't like my voice. I don't like to listen to my own voice, right? But I really <laughs> but my but my why is I want to help somebody else. Beyond that, mm-hmm. I love doing this, but my why is 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 greater. So um how would you um ex- uh, uh, encourage someone to find their why and at the same time. This is going to sound weird, but if you don't know what your why is, I don't want you to go looking for it. What did he just say? <laughs> this goes back to what I said earlier of pushing a rope. My why came a result of me getting fired and I started reading books and listening to podcasts and, and it just blossomed when I hired a coach. Mm-hmm. I believe your why is revealed to you when you're ready for it. Hmm. Okay. When you are ready, your why will just pop up. You're like, Ooh, Ooh, I like that. Where's that been all my life? (laughs) Don't go searching for it. Like you're searching for a treasure. Mm -hmm. Your why will reveal itself. Now, if you're listening to us and you're like, well, I don't know if I have a why. I love how Kathy Lee Gifford puts it. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. So if you're mm. alive and you're listening to this conversation with Maurice and myself, you're here for a reason. You're not You're not an accident. Mm-hmm. But maybe you don't know what your why is. There is a why for you, but you haven't found it yet. That's okay. I encourage you to read books, watch YouTube videos, not the silly kid videos, <laughs> but like educational videos, listen to podcasts, talk to people, Mm -hmm. go to conferences. And all of a sudden out of the blue, it's going to like, Oh my gosh, I really want to do that. I I thought about that when I was in college and now here it is. And I want to do it. Then you start exploring it. But I think the worst thing you can do is try to force something because you'll be forcing around uh, a ball into a square peg that the square. uh, What is that saying? Uh, a square, a, a circle uh, in a square, a square peg. Yes, yes. A, yeah. a, a so circle don't, don't a, do that. Uh, yes. <laughs> my, I was not looking for my why when it revealed itself. So maybe you have to go hire a, a coach, a life mm-hmm. coach or a business mm-hmm. coach, and they may see things like my coach did. They saw mm-hmm. something in me. So don't go searching for it because unless you have help because you're probably not going to be successful. You may, but probably not. So, Mark, I appreciate you know everything that you shared today. But how can they reach out to you and where you can help coach them, maybe find their purpose and understand how to overcome their distractions and being overwhelmed and becoming productive as yourself? One central location, mrproductivity.com, M-I-S-T-E-R, mrproductivity.com. You can find out about my podcast. You can join my email newsletter. You can find out about my paid community, find out a little bit more about me on my about page. Everything you want to know about me, MrProductivity.com. So, Mark, I appreciate you coming on today greatly. You've provided a lot of information today. I appreciate you. My pleasure. So, but before I can let you go, my famous question that I ask everybody, my would you rather question. Would you rather choose three doors or a fork in the road? Hmm. I'm kind of a risk taker more at 58 than I ever was before. I'm probably going to say a fork in the road because I'm a daily runner. I like walking every day and a door, you open the door, you see what's behind it. But Mm -hmm. a fork in the road, who knows what you're going to see? You may see beautiful landscapes, waterfalls, a deer, 
So I'm going to say the fork in the road. I appreciate that. That's a, again that uh, this question never fails to ama- amaze me because everybody's perspective is vastly different, and it really mm-hmm. shows how much a individual, you know, how how we are, how we think, how we feel, what influences us, you know. So I appreciate the information that you had given. So no one has talked about the nature side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I appreciate you, Mark. Thank you for coming on today. My pleasure. And thank you for listening to That Will Never Work podcast. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Find us on social media at Chisholm Group LLC and check back weekly for new episodes. Until next time, that will never work, or will it?